paper usually belongs to a major research exist and which we are so still well. hello hello everyone Felipe Lopes. I'm from the Federal University of Paraíba, Brazil, and I am here to present the paper Real-World Case Studies on Transmission-Line Fault Location Feasibility by using M-Class Phaser Measurement Units. This paper was written in partnership with my colleagues Artur Moco from the Brazilian Independent System Operator, Rafael Fernandes from the University of Campinas, and Felipe Camara from Furnas Centrais Electricas. It is well known that utilities have applied fault location algorithms in order to pinpoint faults on the monitored transmission lines after permanent short sequence. This procedure is applied with aim to speed up the line restoration time of the permanent faults and to do so, a diversity of technologies have been applied. Line monitoring devices are used to capture measurements from one, two or more line terminals in such a way that we can analyze these measurements and estimate the fault distance. But in this context, phaser-based fault location techniques are the most used and uh, these techniques can be applied considering phaser estimations taken from relays, externally estimated from instantaneous values obtained from the FRs, for instance, or even taken from PMUs. However, since the phaser estimation procedure is required, it is important to understand how these phasers are estimated. And in this aspect, it is important to understand how the different algorithms will behave depending on the characteristics of the monitored signal. So, to illustrate such a question, uh, let us consider a fault current in which we can see some decaying DC component. Ideally, what we expect to see in the estimated phasers in relation, for instance, the, the magnitude of these phasers, we expect to see the RMS value, but here we are considering the peak value just for the sake of simplification during the analysis. Ideally, it is expected to see this magnitude varying abruptly from the pre-fault state state uh, to the fault period in such a way that we could distinguish both situations immediately after the fault inception. However, in the real life, when we apply different algorithms, which use one cycle data or half cycle data, we can see that the transient response is different for each algorithm. Regarding the convergence delay, we can see that when we use short windows, a quick convergence is verified, but the CDK components and some harmonic content are not completely eliminated. Thereby, one cycle data windows are often used in protective relays, but we know also that PMEUs further improve these algorithms, providing even more accurate phaser estimation. However, to do so, these PMEUs require additional filtering which result in additional delays. In order to analyze the problems that can arise due to these additional delays, let us consider a fault current record in which we firstly estimate the phaser using a one cycle data algorithm and then a PMU. As we can see here, if we consider a zoomed area during the step state, we can see that the phaser estimation estimated by the PMU is more stable. But when we consider the, the fault 
period, we can see that the relay algorithm allows you to have more samples during the full period, whereas the PMU estimation only touches the, the, the steady state fault period here and then it goes uh, to the 30 period which would be uh, like a, a post fault period. So we can see that full or no samples can take place at the full state state if we consider the PMU estimation and we can see also that the time stamping is uh, the, the time stamps are are used at the middle of the data window leading the PMU records to vary earlier than the distributed exception. Regarding these PMUs, it is also important to notice that uh, there are two classes. Firstly, we have here the M class PMUs, which are uh, mainly used for in, in measurement applications in such a way that they are more accurate and thereby they have larger delays. And we have also the P class PMUs, which use uh, less filtering, but they will present shorter delays. They are more accurate than protective delays during the phaser estimation process, but they still have uh, 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 delays which are shorter than those verified in M class PMUs. Thus, if we consider these characteristics, it is easy to notice that if we are talking about fault location applications, I want to have samples during the fault steady state, and so it can be a problem if I have no samples here, and that is why M-class PMUs have not been used for this purpose. On the other hand, M-class PMUs are widely available in several countries. For instance, Brazil has a lot of M-class PMUs installed in, the, in its uh, transmission network, such as illustrated here by these stars, which represent the M-class PMUs installed in Brazil. But historically, the M-class PMUs have not been used for fault location purpose due to that additional delay uh, that we have explained in the previous slides. But there is a great interest in expanding the utilization of these already installed PMUs in such a way that in this paper we try to respond to this question. Is the fault location based on M-class PMUs feasible? The, the goal of this paper is to investigate if there are evidences on whether M-class PMU data could be used for fault location application or not. To do so, uh, real-world records taken from the Brazilian interconnected power system were taken into account. Basically, we take measurements from real M-class PMUs and at the same terminal we consider real data taken from the FRs. In this case we are analyzing the instantaneous values which are firstly pre-processed and then used to estimate phasors using a relay-like algorithm. Then since PMU phasers and relay phasers are obtained, we apply single and phasor-based fault location methods, resulting in the estimations MPMU and M-relay. And finally, we calculate the absolute error considering the absolute value of the difference between the estimated fault distance and the fault distance reported by line inspection crews for each analyzed case. Three real-world scenarios are evaluated and for each case, four single-ended phasor-based fault location methods are considered, namely the reactance method, the Takagi method, Ericsson method and Wisniewski method. Here we illustrate the three analyzed cases the case 1 
consists of a BG fold that took place on a double circuit series compensated line. Uh, the case two regards to a CG fold that took place within a single-ended circuit line where at one terminal we have here an HVDC link connected and the case 3 is a CG fold that took place on a double circuit line interconnecting here substations E and D and as you will see in the next slides it is a case of high resistance fold in case 1 these are the voltage and current waveforms. So, analyzing the fault period, we apply the fault location. Here, this line is the reference line, which represents the actual fault location found by line inspection crews. And we can see here that the, uh, the fault location from relays and the PMU uh, were very close to the real one. And here we show the absolute errors calculated from substation A. We can see here that the errors did not exceed for, for the PMUs something like uh, 6 kilometers approximately. And using relays, it, it converted to errors of about 2 kilometers. However, analyzing the substation B here, we can see that signals have presented a lot of oscillations during the fault location. So we consider this paper the average value during the, that period. And regarding the errors, we can see that both, both uh, relay and PMU fault locations were uh, presented an accuracy uh, within the accepted margin of about 3 and 2 kilometers approximately. So, the, the good thing is that n class PMUs has shown to be uh, capable of estimating the fault distance. They yielded accepted, acceptable errors, but several oscillations were verified in relay estimations. In case two, we have a very similar behavior. Again, the errors here at substation D uh, did not exceed the, the order of two kilometers for both PMU and relay estimations. And at the other side, at substation C, we obtained even more accurate estimations in such a way that the errors did not exceed the order of 1.8 kilometers. Again, M-class PMUs yielded uh, acceptable errors and we could uh, verify the oscillations more oscillations in the forest relay uh, during the analysis of this case. Finally, analyzing the case 3, we can see that this is a typical high resistance fault. We can see that the current here increases gradually, but uh, even uh, considering such a behavior, we could see here that the estimations were very, were very accurate. To demonstrate the, uh, this case in more detail, we show here the estimated fault resistance and we can see that it starts with a value of about 80 ohms and it decreases until 20 ohms but the errors did not exceed the order of 3.8 kilometers which are acceptable for phasal based fault location methods. Thus, as conclusions, we can say that relays and M-class PMUs presented very similar performances. The M-class PMU estimations were more stable. Indeed, they, they have improved filters, but they have also additional delays. In such a way that this was a surprising performance for us. Uh, indeed, it has been commonly accepted that using M-class PMU data in fault location application is unfeasible due to the additional delays, but evidences shown in this paper demonstrate that M-class PMUs could be applied in these evaluated scenarios. So, evidences exist 
but we recognize that further investigations must be carried out so that in future works we intend to assess different PMO's brands, different fault scenarios, and different system characteristics. So that's it. I would like to thank you for your attention and I invite you to follow us in our channels. This paper usually belongs to a major research. Exists, uh, which we are so well. Hello.